Alright, today we're doing part 16 of the Honda VF1000 buggy. Now, last video we finally got to take it off-road and see how well this thing handles. I gotta say, I'm really impressed with how well it handles. This is actually not a really, not a bad off-roading machine. It actually does incredible. There are a couple issues that we're going to hopefully be working on and solving in this video. First issue is simply no power steering. I kind of knew that was going to be an issue, but I was kind of hoping it wasn't going to be that bad. But after a couple hours of muscling that steering around and having the steering wheel jerk out of your hands if you hit a, hit a rock, it's kind of it's kind of a pain, so we're going to be hopefully solving that issue. Second issue is simply the engine was overheating quite a lot. I'm not really sure how well I showed that in the riding video, but it was overheating. <laughs> kind of to the point where there was bubbles coming out of the fuel line going into the carburetor, which I think that means that the gasoline was boiling a bit, which is kind of a little bit ner uh, nerve-wracking, so um, we're going to hopefully be solving that issue. I think the radiator on there is just simply too small. I bought a much bigger radiator. It's kind of a little too big, I will admit. We can fit it on there, it's just hopefully it's not going to uh, change the performance of the engine any by cooling it down too much. I don't know if that's a thing, hopefully not, so uh, we're going to hopefully solve that issue and get the engine running a lot better.
So I know you guys are wondering why I chose such a large radiator for this thing. This is only a motorcycle engine. Now, I didn't really emphasize it in the last video, but we were having some really bad engine overheating issues. That's why I really had to drive it easy, couldn't really rev it that much. I got a lot of comments saying I drive like a granny and I need to rev the engine more, but we were having engine overheating issues to the point where the gasoline was boiling inside the fuel line. That's kind of how... That's how hot it got. A little nerve-wracking driving it when it was doing that, but we kept having to stop, let the engine cool down. But after uh, you know running it for long enough, it got pretty hot. So that's why I chose such a large radiator because th this engine stock turns out it uses two radiators. One of them is about the same size as this one. This was, this is what we were using originally, and um, you know. With the stock motorcycle, they're designed to have a lot of airflow through them because you're driving on the highway and all that kind of stuff. With this, we're not doing that. We're going slower. We're going, you know, I want to be able to put this thing in first gear, rev the engine to five or six grand, and not have the engine overheat. I wanted a big enough radiator to push enough airflow through it. That's why I put two radiator fans on here to hopefully cool this thing down enough to where I don't have to be going fast to be able to have the engine cool down and then all that kind of stuff. So, plus, you got to admit, the, the, this new radiator makes it look awesome. It totally gives it a racing look. So, uh, bonuses for that. Let's move on to something else. So, I did have to clean the carburetor after driving it. The last uh, few hours of driving it off road, it was running really poorly, it kept dying every time I let off the throttle, and it was only idling on two cylinders. I was really nervous at first that I broke it. But after bringing it back here the next day, I checked everything. It all the all four cylinders have a spark. Um, the two cylinders that weren't firing, I checked the compression. They're still good. They're still above 160, so it's not that. I let it idle um, on two cylinders for about a minute. I turned it off and pulled the spark plugs out of the two cylinders that weren't firing, and they were completely dry. So it just means that they weren't getting enough fuel. And I took it apart, and turns out that these smaller jets, I believe these are idling jets. No idea, but they were just clogged. Three of the four of these jets were clogged, so I cleaned them up and um, checked everything, cleaned everything, and uh, everything should be good. Let's put this thing back together, put it on the bike, and I guess um, the next thing we should do is work on the power steering. I put this uh, extra stuff on the fuel line. I forget what they called it, but it's like basically like fireproof insulation material, whatever that, whatever it is. Um, hopefully, it's gonna like protect the fuel line from the heat of the engine to keep it from getting pretty hot. Last time, it got like really hot, and really pliable, just sitting on top of the cylinder. So hopefully, this is gonna protect it. I was able to squeeze in the electric power steering column. It's not in the way of my feet. I can still hit all the pedals, it's, but it's kind of, it is right there. So um, I wired it all up and I gotta say, I'm impressed. This is with it off. I can just about get the steering to turn from all the way from one side to the next, but it is definitely a workout. Flip it on, it takes about 10 seconds for it to turn on. But once it does, you can definitely feel when it kicks on, there it goes. 
yeah, it is really impressive how well it works. Now, if you guys are wanting to add electric power steering to your buggies, I'm going to add a link in the description below to where I bought this. Sometimes eBay doesn't like me doing that. The ads or the, uh, the listings tend to go away sometimes when it's just a one-time buy. So if it doesn't show up in the link in the description, all you have to do is go on eBay and type in electric power steering kit. Find a Prius steering column that comes with the control unit. You have to get the control unit to get the thing to work. Super simple to hook up. Um, I would highly recommend doing it. So I want to make sure that there's coolant flowing even when this engine is idling. So I'm going to start this thing up, let it idle, and then pull this off and see if there's any flowing out. If there's none flowing out, we have a major issue. Uh, but if there is, it should be good. Fire it up. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> um, why did it pour out of here? There it goes. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, that uh, that confirms that. Oh, I feel like an idiot. Oh, wow. Okay, that just double confirmed that. Um, yeah, I had that set up backwards. Turns out, I had this set up backwards. Not too happy about that. Kind of makes me feel like an idiot. But, um, you know, whatever. It turns out that this down here, this big one, you can't see it. That is the inlet. And these two up here are the outlet to the whole cooling system. I thought it was backwards. I thought that was the inlet, or the outlet and then these two up here with the inlet. So that's how I had it set up originally, that's how I have it set up now, and it's backwards. Maybe that's why it was overheating last time? I'm not really sure. Um, no big deal, we can just reroute all this stuff. But um, kinda not too happy about that, it kinda makes me feel like an idiot, but at least we know now. At least we can now set it up the right way. So last night I redid all the uh, all the hoses. So now let's test to see if there's coolant flowing when it's idling. That's what the whole test was about. And then we found out that that was a problem. So uh, fire this thing up. Compare it to when it's off, just to make sure it's not, this doesn't do that normally. Yeah, I'd say that works. We got coolant flowing even when it's idling. Awesome.
don't think it liked that. It was smoking quite a bit. I don't know if you guys could see it. But it's honestly not running that great, which kind of makes me really nervous. So I'd say it's running decent. It's not running the best. You can definitely hear a hesitation when I hit the throttle, but at least it's running. Um, it is making kind it's, let me show you. It is making kind of a clicking noise that wasn't there before we took it off road. And it's leaking coolant out from right here, not here, out from here. It is leaking coolant from this right here. Oh, that's hot. So, yeah, that's um another problem. Awesome. All right, so after cleaning the carburetors, it's running a little better, but it's not running as great as it was before taking this off-road. So I'm kind of a little afraid that we, if taking this off-road multiple times is going to break this engine. I know what we're asking this engine to do is kind of a lot for this massive frame and we're kind of straining it and really straining the gearbox, straining the clutch and uh, asking it to do a lot. So now the plan for right now is to uh, take this off-road yet again, see how well the engine handles, see how well everything else handles. Um, the engine uh, still runs after that, then it's time to paint this project. If it doesn't, if the engine blows up, if something goes wrong, if it yet again r runs really terrible and idles on two cylinders, then it may be time to do yet another engine swap. I'd really rather not do that, but I don't want to spend all this money on a buggy that I can't take off-road and I can't really abuse it without breaking the engine. So I would really rather not do another engine swap but if I had to, I would. But if the engine does run after taking it off-road yet again, the plan is to paint this and call this thing done. I know I said I was going to clear coat this frame, but um, I'm not going to do that just because I have a better idea for the colors. Now, the, the reason for me at least I wanted to clear coat it is because I like the shiny silverness of the bare metal. And now that the frame's kind of rusted a little bit, I'm I'm going to have a really hard time getting the frame back to that shiny, bright metal look. And uh, if I wire wheel it, it's just going to scratch the frame up. If I sandblast it, it's going to make it look even worse. And then if I clear coat it, it's just going to look a little terrible. Plus clear coating it kind of brings a little milky white look to it. So I kind of don't really want to do that. So why don't we just scrap the clear coating idea and just paint it silver. This is a metallic silver spray paint. It doesn't look exactly like the like the cap, but it looks very similar. We're going to be painting the main chassis silver, and then everything else we're going to be painting uh, deep blue. So these color schemes, I think, are going to look awesome for this buggy. Um, it should look awesome. So now I gotta end this video here. The power steering works great. The new rate for everybody who's gonna say that this radiator is way too big for this engine. It, the engine still got pretty hot, even after letting it idle and revving it a little bit outside for like five minutes. So the the radiator's not too big. It's still the engine still gets pretty hot after letting it run for a little bit. So anyway, 
I gotta end this video here. Now I have to thank Go Power Sports for sending me the parts I've used for this project. Also, I have to thank Oxbeam for sending me the lights. Links for everything will be in the description below. Um, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you to all my new Patreon supporters. Uh, thank you so much. But I gotta end this video here. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video.